I'm going to ask you to cast your mind back to this time last <laughs> year. So think of it. It's March. We're heading towards the end of the first quarter. People who are planning on traveling internationally, particularly for the June-July school holidays, are starting to make bookings and buy tickets and think about visa applications because there's three months to go before departure. And this time last year, Wendy, I know your inbox was inundated. Mine was certainly flooded with emails complaining about the same thing. We applied for a visa to go to the UK. It's been 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 14 weeks in some cases, and we still haven't got it back. We have missed the wedding we were meant to go to. The flight that was taking our daughter to start her studies has departed without her. Funerals, school reunions, family get-togethers, holidays people had saved for for years business conferences on the other side all impacted by this people watching their planes leave without them because they had never got their passport back with the visa inside it and i had personal experience with this wendy i was in visa hell this time last year trying to process multiple visas for my son's exchange and i waited nine weeks to get his visa processed which I thought was pretty good at the time. It was a relatively swift turnaround time of nine weeks from the date of application to the moment I had it in my hot hand ready to put with him on an airplane. So it was really, really bad. And the knock-on impact was really expensive for a lot of people. Wendy has had an opportunity to engage with somebody who's quite senior in the UK visa department about how much has changed in the last year, what went wrong this time last year, and what you should expect in 2023. Yeah, already a WhatsApp in from somebody saying it was so stressful. I applied for a UK visa for my mate in Thailand. I didn't know people didn't receive their passports and missed flights, etc. He received his passport on the day of Mm. his departure. And all I can say is he's one of the lucky ones who actually got it in time to leave because a lot of people saw those planes come and go. Now, Wendy, uh, of course, it's peak holiday season around the corner just again. So the visa application numbers will be spiraling up. Should we expect the same kind of chaos again this year? Well, based on a very high upsource, no. Thankfully, there is a a, a completely different uh, situation Um, in place right now. So uh, a couple of days ago, I got to speak to Dominique Hardy, who is UK Visas and Immigration's Head of Visit Visas and International Networks. She was at the on the last day of her 10 week trip across Africa, essentially saying sorry, 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 eating humble pie. And but, um, you know, with that sorry comes, but look at us now. This is what we're back to. So <laughs> to to myself, she said, we humbly accept that our service was nowhere near where it should have been. Um, June 2022 was one of the toughest periods for us. And I would say for many locals wanting to yeah. travel to the UK. Um, our level of service was at its worst then. The good news is that the... <laughs> No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Before we get to the good yes. news, okay, what? What, why was their level of oh, service at such oh, a bad level? Did she offer we, any explanation? We, no, but I, I covered the story at the time. So they had a lot of people who, um, they, they, were, they, was, they were descaling down in terms of capacity during COVID when no one was traveling and all oh, of that. Right, and yeah. then they just couldn't get that engine <laughs> rolling again rolling yeah. again in time. That was that was the story at, at the time. Okay. And it fits in with uh, some good news that she that she uh, shared around that. She said, um, it's back to 15 working days from application to date of issue, which is their standard worldwide. Okay. Um, and she says, we will do our very best uh, to protect that. Normal service actually resumed in January, she says, but she still advises as, as on behalf of the UK government, would-be travellers must apply as close to their three months. You can't apply um, longer than longer that. Than that. Yeah. I think when I applied for my Schengen recently, it was two months. So this is now three months. <laughs> this, this, is the, this is the brick wall I hit last year, Wendy. Oh, really? Uh, some countries tell you six months. Others oh. tell you three months, but uh, effectively three months does seem to be okay. the, the minimum. Well, it's on the record yes. now with the UK yeah. visa. It's it's three so months. the UK, it's three months in advance. Yes, and they're trip. saying, please try to to um, get as close to that as possible to increase your chances and to avoid um, the bottlenecks. They are from April. They go into their peak season. So okay. we're just ahead of that now. Um and the advice, though, is still not to pay for your flight until your visa has been issued. So they don't require uh, to see you. Don't, they don't require you to present your return An ticket. An actual bought ticket. Yes. Okay, so this is what confused a lot of people. And I think you know, different countries all have their different lists of That's requests. True. And I, I know when previously applying for Schengen's, we've been told you had to provide a booked ticket. So the UK is saying, don't buy the ticket 
until the visa has been issued. They've been saying that for a while, but most people do anyway. It's tough that because that puts you close to your flight when it's more expensive, Wendy. Exactly. You want to book in advance. Exactly. Yeah. Which, but then they say, well, um, there's that three-month thing. Yeah. Um, but so you're not you, going to, so that depending, so about well, 15 working days, so let's say two and a bit months yeah. um, that you've got then to, to, to then navigate, buy your tickets. Yeah. But you're still getting into for international travel, that's still, you know, getting quite into late. the more expensive brackets. Getting into the yeah. more, especially yeah. when you're talking peak season in the UK. So the risk, the choice is either you take the risk of saying, well, I'm going to book now for my Just December holiday so that yes. I can get a cheap ticket yes. and then hope to hold that everything's working yes. in October when well, you're actually 90, able to apply. You've got a 97% chance of getting your visa. I asked that question. Okay, 97% um, approval. Yes. And okay. the, why the three, what, what's the main reason for the 3%? Well, false documentation. So it's quite extreme. Gosh, okay. So what they want to know, as most countries do, is that you've got enough money, very important, to support yourself during your however long you're you're visiting for and um of course that you're going to come back um at the end of it yeah at the end yeah. of it yeah so you know if you're 25 and have you know um no job here and uh, you know they might ask you some additional questions kind of thing yeah. but i was surprised that it's as low as three percent she basically did dominic hardy of the uk visa yeah. service say pretty much we're, we're waiting with with open arms um south africans interestingly the numbers traveling to london are not quite back to pre-covid okay. levels while in other countries such as nigeria they're exceeding them so i think they really really want south africans to go and i said to all you know we have affordability thing issues here. yeah we've got yeah. a you know, tanking grand, and we've it's very, very expensive to go to the UK, but yeah. So, she did say they're expecting a bumper year because there's the coronation, of course, in early May, May 6. Um, and if you're wanting to plan a trip around attending that, then you really need to get your visa in like your <laughs> visa application. What like Wimbledon now. would have been a more oh, significant for me, target, absolutely. <laughs> but of course, there's still Wimbledon and Glastonbury. Okay. Um, yes. It wasn't my question. Another journalist okay. asked okay. about the coronation, but um, it wasn't even top of mind. But I think there are a lot of royalists who would, if they wanted to travel, um, plan it around being present for that. As, okay. as, as Dominique put it, a once in a lifetime event. <laughs> okay. well, he hopes so anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay. um, so just, we've got a couple of really interesting WhatsApps and, and voice notes I want to share. Just to say, got a few people asking me about costs for applying for a visa to New Zealand and about do I need a visa transferring through this airport, etc. Those are not questions Wendy can answer. Okay, Definitely Those are questions not. to discuss with your travel agent, please, uh, on another date. But I do think we can play a voice note that has come through with some experience of somebody who's gone through the process of applying for a UK visa uh, quite recently. Let's take a listen to that. Hi, just uh, applied for my UK visa last week and received it within seven days. Wow. It looks Gosh. like it's all good at the moment. Yeah. Thank you. That's great feedback. Thank you so much. So applied Love last week listeners. and already Thank got it you. today. Um, she, Dominique yeah. did say, I remember I said she said she had a good statistic. They have doubled the number of visa decision-making staff since January of Excellent. last year. That's, okay. So that would account for a lot of the faster turnover. Dawn has just messaged to say she got hers in four days. Wow. How about that? Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I was so happy about my Schengen, which was two days. I couldn't believe That's that. That's impressive. Or three. Monday Very to impressive. Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When you, you interrogated a little bit more. I had a chance to ask a lot of yeah. questions. Tell us what so you found So the out. standard visitor visa validity period is six months. Okay. Um, which is quite generous compared to some other countries. They literally give you the for the, the for duration, the duration of, the trip. of your trip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can also apply, as many people will know, for a multi-entry visitor visa, two, five, or ten years, and there's no variation on that. You can't get a six year or a three okay. year or it's whatever. Either two, five, or ten. Yeah. Okay. And that gives you obviously pay a lot for it, but you then get multiple entries during that time without needing to apply for a new visa every time. Um, I was just thinking while I was chatting to her prior to 2009, remember we didn't have to apply. We didn't have to get oh, visas for the UK. Happy yeah. days. Anyway, um, for those who have what Dominique Hardy called short notice short notice needs or that are just not organized, <laughs> there's a five-day priority UK visa service available, obviously via the government's commercial partner, TLS Connect. They have five centers, including Cape Town and Gaberga. And obviously you pay more for that. There is also a next day visa service, sure. which I didn't know about, which is popular with uh, business people. I hate to and imagine how much that must cost. But yeah, if you've been told... Your company's paying for it. Yeah, your tanks notice. in China are, are in, in London are leaking. You've got to get there to see, sort them out. You've got if to you do go. it. Yeah. Um, and they've introduced something called keep your passport while you apply. For those who had a terrible experience, I imagine, when they were 
at their worst. Um, she said it's a little bit more complexity because they then have got to get that veneer, where it's called, it. into your... So you know about that. Okay. I actually did it last year and it wasn't terribly complicated. Really. All it means is you, you submit your application, but you don't... You take your passport back with you. Did you have to pay extra? I did pay extra, but it wasn't uh, a huge amount okay. extra. It was a little bit more. But if you are having to do multiple visa applications, you, so for example, uh, like I was doing... It's all coming back to me yeah. now. You, there's no um, option. Schengen, you have to submit your passport and leave it, certainly at the time we were applying. Okay. So we had no option. So we submitted the UK application, Kept took the, the passport. passport back, did the whole Schengen thing, and then went back at the end. We got a notice to say your UK visa is ready, and you simply drop your passport off and fetch it the next day. Oh, okay, so it's not it immediate. It's just the next day. It's a twenty-four hour okay. um, turnaround. Okay, it was very, very yeah, simply, next door to us. Yeah, and very down the road. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Okay, so it, yeah, as I said, a little bit of an extra cost, but not huge. Okay, good. And you've spoken about visitor numbers, so you said qu- not quite as many South no, Africans going quite, as not used quite to be. As many. Um, um, and then I asked for tips on how to get your well, visa issued, uh, firstly, and then in good time. Um, and it was so interesting. Some of the things that that bog me down, obviously, yeah. bog them down. So, provide your personal contact details in the application rather than those of your travel agent. One of the main reasons for visa issuing delays is not being able to contact applicants directly when we need extra information from oh, that's them. That's interesting. And then, when yeah. you are asked to do it, please do it quickly, um, and tell the truth. No omissions. No fudging. Um, if you can't submit a document, don't sort of. Do a workaround. Just say I don't have this and explain why. Okay. It's so you know the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Um, and as I said, they're testing um, applicants' ability to support themselves financially during their visit, and and of course wanting to know, um, be, be satisfied that there's um, uh, not a uh, high risk that you're not going to want to, to go come back, back home. Now, um, Wendy, somebody asking, what about going on business to the UK? Is that also the same turnaround time when she's talking about that 15 working yes, days? Standard, is that for that's business standard trips? and then the quicker ones if you pay more. Okay. Um, just something else she mentioned was um, a lot of people people wouldn't necessarily be able to meet the requirements, certainly in terms of the finances that you have to show. But if you're going over for compassionate reasons uh, to attend a funeral, for example, they will issue a very um, short uh, term visa so it'll be more just for those few days that you need to be there um, and they will overlook the normal requirements uh, uh, for compassionate reasons which I thought was quite interesting okay but then news. again me be very sure that you ab- uh, adhere to oh, those yes. those visa regulations and I say that as somebody who came through Heathrow and observed a family who were a day past the oh. end of their visa oh, being dear. handled I will say with great compassion but with absolute firmness, and yes. they were in a really terrible position. It was uh, awful to watch yeah. and listen to. They, yeah. were, they were right next to me in the queue. Um, so be mindful of that. Okay, so uh, here yeah, I said Dawn got hers in four days for the UK. Nikki messaging to say, I've just done my biometrics for my UK visa today. They told me it would take three weeks to get the visa. I hope they're right. Nikki, I think they're being overly generous they by the sound of things. Generous. You'll probably have it back by this time next week. I think week. they're over, over, um, uh, under-promising and over-delivering over after what Better happened. Better than last year. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, just an aside, London remains the top international destination for South African business travels travelers for this year, according to Corporate Travel Traveller, rather yep. a division of Flight Centre. Um, businesses are booking on average fifteen days before travelling, so okay. um, they're obviously not going to get. They're going to have to pay a bit extra, yeah, if they're leaving it that late. Um, London, interestingly, is one of the few destinations where airfares have remained the same for 2023 compared to 2022. The number two spot, and, and number two in that list of top destinations for business travel travelers for, from yeah. South Africa is Dubai. Um, they've put on a lot of extra flights, but um, but they're at a price. They're at a price, 53 percent more expensive mm. this year than they were last year. So oh. I think, yeah, it's, I just find that really interesting. So that's business travel. But um, it'll be interesting to see where things sit with those figures this time next year. And okay. certainly the, the, the um, visitors, visitor numbers. Now, somebody asking, how do you get a refund for a visa that was cancelled in the time frame required? The answer is you can't, really? No. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, somebody also saying it's not only the UK that had these dramas. Our experience with Australia was even worse. It took three months and three flight changes before my wife finally got her visa. I will add to that my attempts to get a Schengen visa for Iceland via the Danish embassy here were the most traumatic of my whole you experience had a year. last year. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's certainly not that the UK was the only country having these difficulties last year. But what is notable is how they've 
now upskilled and upstaffed to resolve the issue. And they've already. put their put it yeah. out there, fifteen working days. If something happens, um, it's a huge uptick or whatever, and they suddenly can't cope anymore, they said they will use their channels to get the word out and and, and deal with it as it happens. Lunch with Pippa Hudson on Cape Talk.